Grounded in historical cultural movements, the aesthetics of black radicalism and protest were adopted and developed by Emory Douglas, whose prints, paintings, and newspapers were intended for mass distribution, and Hank Willis Thomas, whose paintings and sculptures are displayed in institutional spaces like museums and galleries. Because of the vastly different intended audiences and historical contexts of these artists' work, these aesthetics function quite differently, while still serving as calls to action against white supremacy, capitalism, and imperialism. As the revolutionary artist and minister of culture for the Black Panther Party, Emory Douglas was responsible for the Black Panther newspaper and all of the other visual media distributed by the party. Because rates of education and literacy were low in Black communities at the time, the use of visual symbols was highly important to Douglas's work, especially in the Black Panther, which at its peak popularity in 1968 to 1971 was distributed to over 300,000 households weekly. These symbols, along with the visual language of printmaking and collage, helped transform Black communities' political consciousness and called the masses to join the struggle for Black liberation. In this 1971 back cover of the Black Panther, Douglas layers images from previous works onto one another, drawings of Black men, women, and children, in his classic style of bold hard lines and two-color printing. His use of red here presents itself both as blood, bringing connotations of violence, but also as the color of love, bringing with it power and collective care. The crowded paper furthers the sense of collectivity of struggle, along with the classic Panther slogan of all power to the people. Several of the figures look directly at the viewer, drawing them in and calling them to join the fight for justice. This image becomes functional then, serving as a call to action, even for those who don't or are unable to read the whole newspaper. Similarly, this spread from a 1969 issue of the Black Panther references Elaine Brown's album, Seize the Time, to encourage viewers to join the struggle for black liberation. This piece, a reproduction of a woodcut print by Douglas, uses the imagery of a pig, a symbol for police and others who abuse their power, that was popularized by Douglas's work. The pigs, fleeing the force of the people who oppose them, run back towards the dark, which typically symbolizes evil that they come from. Here, Douglas uses printmaking to boldly capture the attention of the viewer and quickly reproduce his message. The people shown in the bottom left carry knives and guns, but they also carry a mop and a political poster, and they're joined in their struggle by multiple children, showing that the struggle is for all and that all people must get involved. While Douglas's works were intended for mass distribution, Hank Willis Thomas displays his work in institutional spaces like museums and galleries, using the aesthetics of black radicality to present a critique of the right supremacy and colonialism that define these spaces. Some echoes of Douglas's work can be seen in Thomas's paintings and sculptures, which rely heavily on iconography of protests past and present. Inspired by Ernest Withers' photograph of the 1968 sanitation workers' strike in Memphis, Tennessee, Thomas's 2009 piece, I Am a Man, uses the iconic font and graphic style popularized at the protest to establish a historical record of blackness in America and craft a poetry of black aliveness, consciousness, and vibrancy. Within the space of the gallery, the instantly recognizable text questions the role of the white mainstream's popular culture in instituting oppression and deciding who fits into the category of human. Relying on text rather than images, I Am a Man still manages to create a sense of embodied being and evokes images of mass protest in the context of an empty gallery. Thomas also uses imagery from contemporary protests in his work, most notably in his 2014 sculptural installation entitled Raise Up. As black male bodies raise up from a shelf, their hands are raised above their heads in the iconic hands up, don't shoot position popularized at Black Lives Matter protests following the murder of Michael Brown by Darren Wilson. The symbol of arms raised can be one of submission, showing that one is not a threat, or one of protest, as thousands of people march the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, and beyond. The bodies face away from the viewer. Instead of denying them personhood, doing so paints them as but part of a movement, rendered faceless by numbers. This piece, made the same year as Michael Brown's murder, brought the mass protests spreading across the country into the space of a gallery, which is typically seen as separated from the outside world. Relying heavily on the aesthetics of protest, including limited, bold colors, text, and symbols of power, Emory Douglas's widely seen works function as a call to action for the people, while Hank Willis Thomas's function as a call to action for the institution. Because of the different intended audiences, the works of these artists have different meanings, even as they share certain visual and thematic content. 
Regardless of who they were intended for, both artists' work called the viewer to question the interlocking systems of domination that define our society and our world.